The euro currency finally caught a bid. It's been beaten up pretty much this entire year, even going back to 2018 with the idea that the European economies are struggling, that the ECB won't have the power to raise rates. And, and certainly when you add in the Brexit mess, yes, they seem to have the upper hand, but certainly it's, there's going to be some, some confusion without a resolution that's going to could put downward pressure on the European currency. But today we saw a bid. It was more dollar related, likely some short covering, but certainly took us to our highest level since February. Uh, looked to be pretty much an extension on the weaker dollar. But I, I think at this point right now, uh, this bid could catch some momentum given some of the circumstances around what we could see over the next two to three weeks. So right now, getting a little bit of a bid, we got to 114 and a half, and I think that that's going to be a significant level if we can push through it and then maybe get a sideways trade there. It's very, a lot of these bids we've seen in the euro have been very short-lived, and they haven't been this high, obviously, but we've seen these upticks that have been quickly sold. And I think at this point, this may be one of those times where we see a bit of an extension higher or at least a sustained trade uh, until we get to the next catalyst event, which obviously everything's going to be hanging its hat on Brexit on March 29th or possibly May when we get the if that's where they end up doing it. But right now, uh, if you go to the ECB, yes, they are seeing weakness in growth. They aren't seeing the the upside that they had maybe six months ago. And I think that when we heard Mr. Draghi talk about being ready to do whatever is necessary when it came to lowering rates, his idea of raising rates and doing anything necessary doesn't really uh, translate very well. And some of the rumors out there, not only has the ECB been buying bonds, but now they may start adding stocks to their portfolio. And that would only be a sort of a signal that things are, aren't getting any better. In fact, they're actually getting worse. Some more quantitative easing likely coming from the ECB in the coming months. Uh, so not likely seeing any rate hikes there. That's one of the reasons why we're seeing the lower euro uh, before today, along with the expected lower growth numbers. So the ECB really with its hands tied, trying to figure out ways to prop up its economy and get things moving. Uh, so very dovish uh, stance from, from the ECB continues to add pressure to the euro currency, which again has seen better days, but today was one of those days uh, on the uptick. And lastly, the Brexit, yeah, well, it's been really all talk of the UK. We've heard from Prime Minister May, we heard from the members of Parliament, and they've been voting and talking about how they're going to possibly extend the deadline or ask or request an extension of the deadline with the idea that they don't want a no plan Brexit or hard Brexit or no resolution Brexit, whatever you want to call it, something without any kind of uh, resolution in place. However, the European Union has now decided that they may want to wait. They may not want to wait until after the elections. So that, I think that means that everything's got to be done by the May elections, which puts a bit of urgency. Not that there hasn't been urgency on this decision over the last several months, even going back several years uh, to get this done. But certainly means that they aren't going to be able to wait till June or after. They're going to have to get this done by late May in order to catch those European elections that are going to possibly reseat, reseat and shuffle uh, some of the members of the European Union. So right now, um, I think that could add some some bullishness to the euro, not necessarily on the euro itself, but more negative on the on the pound. So you could start to see that that pound euro cross start to decline. It's obviously been sitting on the highs and that could start to see it drip lower. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. All this changes on March 29th or if they extend it to May, uh, it'll change in, in May. But certainly this has been the it catalyst moment not only for the UK, not only for Europe, but also for the world, waiting to see how this is all going to unwind itself. And I think that the, the high level of uncertainty remains um, and will continue to remain. You're seeing it reflected in, in flight to quality bids in U.S. products, whether it be treasuries. We're seeing treasuries on the low yields. Even before today, uh, U.S. stocks have been doing well. Yeah, and, and I think that ultimately uh, the, the flight to quality bid isn't going to go away. However, it could slow as we near uh, as we near the Brexit line in the sand and gold prices should look to, to rally here despite what happens with the dollar. Again, it's going to be a flight to quality bid to riskless assets in the wake of what could come or what may come uh, after we see what happens with the Brexit uh, resolution, if we even get one. So heading in after the Fed today, we saw a bid to the euro currency. How long will that last has yet to be seen, but it certainly goes a long way given the path it's been on over the last several months.